Now, you're a geologist. Yes. You had a PhD in geology. Yeah. You're from Romania originally. Yes. Uh, when, when did you get interested in Darwin? I mean, you, with all of your studies up to your PhD, I'm sure you were encountering Darwin time and time again. Well, Darwin was the background of everything yeah. in the communist system that I was born and raised, of course. Yeah. That's why today Romanians and many other former communist people are so against Darwin, because to them Darwinism and communism is pretty much the same thing. But uh, I became interested in uh, telling the true story of Charles Darwin when uh, I discovered that he made a number of very significant mistakes in his geological interpretations of the places he has seen during the voyage of the Beagle, before that and after that. And since I knew that his geology played a foundational role in his biology, it seemed to me very interesting to approach his mistakes in geology and then just lead people into this idea, wait a minute, Darwin was not just a perfect scientist. He made a lot of mistakes. And if he was wrong in his geology, how about his biology? Uh, and that's basically how the whole idea started. But uh, to be very uh, precise, it actually started in 20, uh, 2006 when uh, my wife and I were visiting England. We had an international conference on creationism there. And we realized that 2009 is going to be a big hype because it's not only the anniversary of the first printing of the origins, but in February, it has been 200 years from his birth. Mm. So it's a bicentenary. And uh, I realized this is going to be a huge hype in 2009. Everybody's going to sing the praises to Darwin. And we thought, okay, let's just, what if we told the real story of what he saw? Well, he went wrong. You know, and just present the other Darwin, Darwin the real man, not the saint of science, because you know scientists are building hagiographies today. Uh, so uh, it it's just stayed there because as I shared this with my wife, she, I said, "Well, this is too big a project. Our ministry, Creation Ministries International, will not be able to to finance such a huge project because you don't do a, an amateurish work here. This is a serious job to be done." And she said, why don't you dare share the idea with them? I said, it's useless because there's no way we have this money. And it stayed like that for quite a number of uh, months until she kept pushing me so hard, you know. <laughs> you <laughs> so gave so in. I gave in. I said, okay, <laughs> let me share this idea. Yeah. And uh, the international board right away realized that this was a very good idea to, to follow. And it was amazing because... Uh, a call for fundraising was uh, issued in January 2008. And by July 2008, $640,000 were raised internationally for this documentary. Yeah. Well, the final cost is way above yeah. that, but doesn't matter. This is by far the biggest uh, documentary ever made by a creationist organization. Uh, what is really fascinating, in a way, is that we had to create a front. It's called Fathom Media. Because if we would, would have been overtly creationist organizations trying to shoot a documentary about Darwin, for example, we would have not any chance, we have not no ch any chance to get a permit to film on Galapagos. Really? Yes. That's how it is. If they knew we were creationists, they wouldn't have issued the permit. So we had to use the front. Who, who controls the Galapagos? Uh, well, it's an international research uh, station. Officially, it's the state of Ecuador to whom it belongs, but actually, uh, uh, it's it's more uh, more of a joint uh, American and English uh, venture. I so there's this very mention. strong there's very strong bias against oh. uh, the other perspective. It is incredible, actually. Yeah. Uh, it goes to the extent that if they find out you're a Christian, they don't want to be in that film. Now, um, uh, have you had any critical reviews of the movie? Yes, we had uh, uh, Tom Bear actually reviewed it. It was one of the best documentaries ever made. That's what he said about it. Um, we had uh, some public screenings, all very, very successful. What kind of reaction from uh, the scientific community? Thus far, the scientific community seemed to be fairly silent, except bloggers. Right. And for the bloggers, the equation is very simple. This is a creationist film because there's Creation Ministries International right. behind right. it. So it's not good. So it's biased. Yes. Yeah. When in fact, it is not biased. We have definitely struggled, and I think God has helped us succeed in keeping this very even. We show the good parts of Darwin, the bad parts. The film is not just the story of the voyage, it's the story of Charles Darwin from childhood to his death. Now, studying Darwin as you have, and I know that his, his reputation is a little bit um, in question by even 
secular scientists, as is uh, Sigmund Freud's, you know, by some mm. psychiatrists these days. I mean, these guys had terrific ideas, at least at the time, and mm. they were the first one in. And often when you're the first one in, you're the one that has the most influence. Uh, but as you studied Darwin, as you did the movie, what about uh, the man do you admire? Oh, it's his incredible ability of seeing things, thinking about them, and putting them together in something which looked very coherent. Now, if you consider the fact that he started his trip, the voyage of the Beagle, at age 22, basically, he was in a very unique situation. He came with some knowledge in geology, not much because his degree was not in geology. It was in divinity from Cambridge, Christ's College. But in the meantime, he had a very seminal book in his hands, uh, The Principles of Geology by Charles Lyell. The first volume he got as he went on board the Beagle, 1831. Uh, and then, step by step, the second volume and the third volume. So he was self-taught Yes. in this discipline. So he had this book at, at his hand, and then he had the reality in the field. Right. So he analyzed everything in the perspective of that book. And he was in this unique situation, being able to apply this new book, which was, I mean, all things aside, Principles of Geology is a very important book, right? And he was the first to really apply it, apply it in a, an unknown geological environment. So that's why uh, it was really important for him. Uh, but he already came with what we call today an agenda. He was looking for deep time. For what? Deep time. You see... Deep time, what does yes, that mean? Yes, uh, it means like... A time way beyond the biblical time frame. Oh, I see. Uh, actually, in one of his correspondence, uh, um, Charles Lyell clearly stated that he proceeded in writing uh, the uh, principles of geology in order to liberate science from Moses. Mm 